This news update is brought to you by... Rock the remote with hours of free karaoke on video on demand from Flo. So bring it like Bay. There's even wonderful kids sing-alongs too, available anytime. Simply press the VOD button on your Flo remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Bobby the City Afternoon Update. It's Thursday, February 18, 2016. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Gay rights activist Darcy Dia is seeking to set the record straight. He says the lesbian, gays, bisexuals, and the transgender community has not interpreted the Just Pass Domestic Protection Orders Act and the Sexual Offenses Act as an open door to same-sex marriage in Barbados. Yesterday in the Upper House, Senator Dr. Esther Bayasuku made it clear that the two pieces of legislation, though gender neutral, is not linked to any move to legalize same-sex marriage in the country. The Domestic Act would allow open the door for A former international expert on HIV AIDS raises concern about certain aspects of the Just Pass Sexual Offenses Act. Senator Lady Haynes, who chaired the board of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria, yesterday called for a review of several clauses in the Act. The former chair of the National HIV AIDS Commission in the Prime Minister's office made specific reference to Clause 18, which deals with the suppression of brothels. The Sexual Offense Act should be renamed the Regulation of Brothels and amended to read that anybody who fails to register and comply under the public health regulations is guilty of an offense. Um, so that rather than what would be important is managing brothels or register so that you have some public health supervision she also raised issue with terms used to describe some individuals who commit sexual offenses. Clause reads, where a person under circumstances that do not amount to rape has sexual intercourse with another who is an idiot, imbecile, or mentally subnormal. And I'm present, I also feel that is acceptable. I, I cannot see how we can in this day and age have legislation which reads like that. Meantime, Senator Reverend David Durant issued a call for the implementation of privacy legislation to protect people from defamation, cyber stalking, and other issues on social media. Citizens from defamation, character, cyber stalking that we heard about earlier, internet harassment, posting of sexual photos, you know, because you followed with your partner or your spouse, suddenly you go on and fill the news media with photos of sexual activity that you may have had with him or her before. I think it's time that some privacy clauses be, be introduced and legislated so that police have the right to go and make sure that thing or those postings are taken down and also that computer, laptop or whatever is used is, is taken away. You know, I would like to also um, suggest that we provide a survivor's handbook you know, for all victims of domestic violence. A survivor's handbook, a handbook developed to explain the legal system and how it works, you know, in its relation to domestic violence, you know, explaining your rights and explaining the rights of the victim. In other news, energy officials are appealing for local investment from financial institutions to generate more energy from renewable resources. President of the Barbados Renewable Energy Association, Aidan Rogers, says while the country installed about 10 megawatts of capacity, totaling just over $15 million in investments under the Renewable Energy Rider program, there is still an opportunity to increase that capacity. However, Rogers says the sector needs more local backing to make that happen. 
if we can have domestic capital in, investing in this, this sector, what it would do is create a multiplier effect in the economy where there will be greater traps of disposable incomes within the hands of Barbadians. We've been talking for decades, the economists have been bemoaning, what can we do to stimulate this economy, put more cash in Barbadian hands? This is a viable option. It meets environmental targets. It saves foreign exchange. The head of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency is not at all satisfied with the efforts of regional governments to tackle climate change and disaster management. Neither is Ronald Jackson satisfied with the efforts of the people. He sounded his concerns during a press conference hosted by the Caribbean Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology at the Savannah Hotel yesterday, where officials warned the region to prepare for the risk of landslides and flash floods during the hurricane season as drought conditions lessen. Jackson said while people continued to look to government to supply all the answers, Caribbean citizens also had a role to play in the region's development. There's regional and international news after this short break. and activities for everybody. So don't dixie doodle your fizzy hog. I, brother daddy, will be there, along with my sheep, Dolly, Dootsie, and Dan. So come, let me say, we the very best of agriculture in the Caribbean. To news from the region, Jamaica's ruling People's National Party says it will not participate in the national debates at any level whatsoever ahead of the general election. According to reports, the position was stated in a letter from the party's general secretary, Paul Burke, to the chairman of the Jamaica Debates Commission, Noel DeCosta. The PNP said it had given Andrew Holness, the leader of the Jamaica Liberal Party, what it says was more than adequate time and opportunity to address issues that were conditions for the PNP's involvement in national debates. Book went on to say that answers by the JLP leader on several integrity issues were found lacking and unsatisfactory and not credible. And as such, the PNP was left with no option but to decline from participating in the debate. On the international scene, Turkey's president says 14 people have been arrested in connection with Wednesday's deadly attack on a military convoy. He also revealed that there is evidence to prove that Kurdish YPD PG militia based in Syria was responsible for bombing in Ankara. The group has denied any involvement. Syria then, Suzanne. It's emerged that a YPG member who entered Turkey from Syria carried out this attack with support from members of the separatist terrorist organization, the PKK. The person who carried out this suicide attack is Salih Nejar, born in northern Syria in 1992. Therefore, the direct link between the attack and YPG is now evident. As a result of intelligence and security work overnight, nine people were arrested. The investigations are ongoing. All those responsible will be caught and made to face justice. And that's the news and sports. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bv. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and the Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good afternoon.